Previously in New World, I started episode 5 at level 50 with the intention of getting to level 60. I went back to clear the Starstone Barrows dungeon, got constantly distracted by gathering whilst questing, we got involved with some fun open world PvP, I learned that it was dumb to have a shield equipped as a mage, we learned about bears and their true feelings towards honey, we desecrated the tree people's ancient temple, and we got to experience our first 50 vs 50 siege as an attacker. So much happened in in episode 5 that I actually ended the video at level 55, so this episode will feature around 3 weeks worth of progression, levelling to 60 and a lot of endgame stuff. But first, a quick word from today's sponsor. Heroes of the Dark is a Victorian era strategic RPG that's available on both Android and iOS, in which you must build a team of dark heroes including werewolves, vampires and humans to conquer enemies and forge a kingdom in a Victorian empire from the comfort of your very own mansion that you'll expand, upgrade and customise as you progress through the game. In terms of gameplay, Heroes of the Dark features a real-time strategic combat system based on positioning and building a diverse lineup of heroes that complement each other in battle to form a well-rounded team. Hero types include Bruiser, Tank, Nuka, Ranger, Assassin and Support, each of which you'll have to progress individually by collecting resources to both rank and level them up, as well as equipping them with armour and weapons. At its core, Heroes of the Dark is a game of collection, strategy, composition and creating a long-term sense of progression with fun daily activities for players to partake in, including PvP, campaign story missions, mansion upgrades, and weekly events that reward players with a variety of free stuff. Speaking of free stuff, Heroes of the Dark has partnered with Samsung to do a massive giveaway, with prizes including a Galaxy Fold 3, A52 and other gadgets. Samsung users simply download the game from the Samsung Galaxy Store with my link to enter. Additionally, all players that download the game via my link in the description below will get 500k gold and 500k moon dust for free to help you get started. Download Heroes of the Dark now. Back again today with what should be the final episode of my New World Journey to Max level. Starting off the episode, we're here in Ebon Scale Reach to go pay a trip to the Faction Commander to do the final Faction Advancement Quest. You're probably thinking, what the hell, Peon? The last episode, you was Destroyer rank, how are you already Commander? And this is where my editor needs to retroactively edit what I just recorded because I forgot that I was now starting episode 6, so I've kind of mixed up the recordings. Hayden, and that's when you do a transition. It says on the screen, um, 10 min 20 minutes earlier, and basically explain that I forgot that I'm recording episode 6. I knew exactly what to do, but in a much more real sense, I had no idea what to do. So right now I'm here in the Great Cleave, running PvP faction missions. I asked my friend and he told me that this is the best place to grind faction rep. I've been running back and forth for about 40 minutes, and as you can see, I'm almost at commander rank already. Just to demonstrate how fast this is, these PvP faction missions refresh every five minutes. You can do three of them before they even refresh. So I'm gonna grab them here. One, two, three. You run here, you grab the box, you watch your back, and you take the package to this point, you grab the goat, and that's it. And we just head back to town, back to base. And as you can see, missions refresh in 40 seconds. Additionally, whilst I was doing my rep grind, something I did was I reset my attributes, and now I have 300 int, but I've gone back to 40 constitution. So now I have plus 30% first hit damage on full health targets. With this, I can absolutely just blow someone up if they're not paying attention or if I get the first hit. Hand in the quest. And now, we've just got an achievement. Marauder Commander. With that, I guess I'm saving up for 60 gear. So today I plan on joining something called a Hive Run. Never done one before, but I would assume it's just a group of players that run from zone to zone, clearing the corrupted portals. We have found the Hive Group. Okay, we cleared it. How much XP? 3k XP. It's pretty good XP. What type of loot? High gear score loot as well. Seems fairly worth. You need to really try hard with the damage to get credit. Not everyone gets credit. If there's too many people, it becomes a little bit try hard. Do you get credit? Yes, and that's level 56. This is fast leveling. It's a decent mindless way of leveling up. There's no challenge in it, really. The biggest challenge is just tagging enough mobs if the group's of a certain size that only a select few can get contribution. 
I wouldn't want to spend all day doing this. I am bored of it already after about 30 minutes and I kind of want to go back to my town projects now. Here again today with another war today we're fighting to take the cutlass keys. <laughs> I type in the chat any strat rush and win of course. Current gear score going into this battle 432. I had a few upgrades since yesterday and I've actually bothered gemming my gear. Let's go. Rush C. Oh, we're hitting so many people with AoEs. Check the back line. Oh, I'm almost dead. Heal. I'm in hot with the AoE. Looks like we've caught. Got, got number C. Big sticky damage balls. Um, phrasing. Game's lagging like hell. I'm somehow still playing. So suck them on the gate. Okay, we've captured all the points. Drop AoEs. Oh, now we're flanking them perfectly. Let's go. Oh, they're all over there. Just so stacked. Yes, stack for me. This is where you want to be positioned as a mage. AoE the point. And we win. <laughs> Seven minutes. We won even faster this time. Damn, not bad. So today we finished 21st. So what's the map look like now? Oh, yes, that's better. The Marauders have reasserted dominance. Oh, that's level 57. Got it from just grinding mobs a bit. I score and look, mastery 17. For the past few hours, I've just been spamming these faction PvP quests in the Great Cleave with my guilds. I've saved up enough points to buy three new tier five pieces of gear that I'll be able to equip upon hitting 60. I think I need like three more pieces and then I've got the full commander PVP set ready to go once I'm level 60. The XP for doing these PVP missions is very small, but this is a grind that I would have had to have done regardless. So I decided to get it out of the way now and at least benefit from a little bit of the XP. Ding, ding, dong. And that's level 58. It's time to put some banging tunes on to help me deal with this grind. There you go, 50k tokens. Tokens are capped at 50k. Now I'm gonna buy the reward. Ice Gauntlet. I need about 29k tokens and I am fully finished with this grind. Got quite a nice little squad to run these PvP missions with today. Shout out to Tux, Dragle, and Kane Knight. Hand in this bunch of quests and that's 50k tokens by my final PvP weapon, the Commander Firestaff. 25 int. Hand in the quests, and that's level 59, one more level to level 60. Just got the invite to join the war, today we're fighting to capture Restless Shore. So, let's see if we can make it three wins from three whilst attacking as the Marauders. Let's go team, let's try and reinforce B. This is a tough war, much tougher than the previous one, these people seem serious. Get on C lads, feel like this siege is going to last a little bit longer. It's a good war this one. It's much closer than the other ones I've been in. Big damage, big damage. Let's go, push out together. Suck my dear. I think these guys are just too strong. Okay, you can't win them all. Just keep pumping out damage, it's my job. Bit of an overwhelming show of force from this defending guild. Fair play to them. I don't think they've ever lost the Cutlass Keys before. There it is, there's the defeat. 10k XP. Still got a bunch of Az off. I think we still get the same rewards. Just less than half a bar of XP till level 60. We're gonna smash out some town projects and go get it. Yo, tier five kitchen in Everfall. Looks like we're gonna go max out our cooking. Okay, Hayden, get your cooking memes ready. Now let's make some tier five meals. These give 
775 cooking XP a pop. More than double what tier 4 meals give. Let's go, how much XP? Oh, 197 cooking, 35 more, is this enough? 199, <laughs> we're almost there. There it is. Yeah, <laughs> boy. 200 cooking, another skill maxed. Absolutely beautiful. Didn't expect to get that before level 60. It goes even higher, it feels like I've been climbing for ages. This mountain's insane. Oh, I remember this. Back in episode one, I think I stood around here in Monarch Bluffs and I looked over and I saw this giant mountain and I think I said something like, I wonder if we can actually go there. We can. I'm here now. We've come a long way since EP1. The sense of scale in this game is unbelievable. And now we are atop Serenity Monastery. Let's see if we are rewarded with a view. Pretty badass looking boss sat here waiting for me. Let's see if I can run around the back of him. Don't mind me, mate. I'm just trying to get a thumbnail for my YouTube vid. Oh no, Tent tentacles not. Quick, 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 get the thumbnail, get the thumbnail. Oh, there we go, epic thumbnail. We're, we're done. Okay, are we ready for the biggest jumper that we have had so far in New World? Jumper. Are we gonna die? Couldn't possibly. <laughs> Couldn't possibly die. Hello there. Oh, it's a bear. Quickly look the pigment. Well, that was quite the adventure. That's given me a shortcut back to town's hand in these quests. Fire Staff Mastery 19. One more level and we've maxed out the Fire Staff. Returning to Urban Scale Reach, victorious. And hand in what should be the final the final quest. And that's level 60. I was worried I didn't have enough XP there, but we just about got it. We can get the tier five Azov staff now. And most importantly, we can equip our tier five epic commander gear. And there it is. All of my main gear is 520 with my weapons being 525. The only thing that's bringing down my gear score from 500 are my accessories. 498 gear score, not bad. And that puts my current stats to 72 constitution, 319 int. Full int, absolute glass cannon. What should I do now, I'm level 60. Join Outpost Rush. Oh no, 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 no. So despite it being 4 a.m. server time, I've surprisingly managed to find a group to do the Dynasty Shipyard Dungeon. I was gonna do this tomorrow, but I guess I'm gonna do it now. Basically a corrupted Asian themed dungeon. Using his Azov stuff on the corrupted monolith. That's destroying the corruption. So we're basically cleansing this place of corruption. Is this the first boss? Not sure. Potentially. Oh yeah, she looks like a boss. She's fucking people up. Good job. Commander Chen. Oh, I think this is the boss fight. I think you need to kill the ads. Like one of them tanks the dude around and then you kill the ads and you kill him. Okay, that's her down. Now just for the commander. Okay, yeah, we've handled this really well. Well, the tank has anyway. Big damage. 125 gold for just killing the boss. What did we get? Um, oh, I got a bloody amazing healer earring. Dropping my hot sticky lava balls all over the floor. Oh, nice AOE. This is becoming quite efficient. Big AOEs, big AOEs, beautiful. So now we're fighting Isabella. Pretty short dungeon if she's the final boss. Dungeon does have mechanics. Looks like she's gonna set this bear on us later on. There's bloody bears and monsters in the cages. Oh, yeah, here's one of them. Dodge. Ow. Ice block. Killed the two adds. Now we're gonna fight Isabella again, I guess. Oh, epic loot over here. Oh, what do we get? <gasps> we got the ring! Yes, let's go! 504 gear score. Huge upgrade. That's what we wanted. I'm very happy. I got the main thing I wanted from this dungeon. I'm hitting like a beast now. I guess this is the last boss. Get the revive. Oi! Got you. All right, we need to reset. Oh, I see. This is what we messed up on. Two of our players disconnected. That's that's why they died. Crashing at the boss. This person said it's been happening to a lot of people. Okay, here he is. It's taken him 10 minutes to get here. Let's hope nobody else crashes during this run. Dodge, dodge. The mechanics don't seem super punishing. Yeah, quite avoidable. <laughs> I thought there was going to be an extra phase or something. Victory. We've finally done it. Now we can comfortably quest in the big boy zones. 
Adriana's still here, doing her thing. We need to get her some help. After I completed the Dynasty Shipyard and handed in the MSQ, I decided to take a break from questing to focus on getting all the gathering skills past level 175. I first dinged 175 harvesting which allowed me to gather wild fibre. I leveled my lumbering to 175 by grinding dryad wolves which have a very fast spawn rate and allow you to chop them for word wood upon death. During this grind I stored around 20k word wood in one of the Eden Grove trading posts, expecting the price to go higher in the future. I dinged 175 and could now chop iron wood. Later that night I joined a 5 man group to grind the level 65 plus elite zone Mirk Guard in hopes of rare drops, chests and boss kills. I got quite a few watermark upgrades during this run and learned the hard way that some of these bosses are no joke. Feeling proud of my 175 logging, I took a trip down to Restless Shore to clear out the ironwood trees that were acting as a door to the elite grind spot. I killed the boss and looted the chests, feeling good about clearing the monsters I was afraid of during the leveling with ease. And after that I dinged 175 mining, which allowed me to mine Aurichalcum ore. At this point I'm a few days into being level 60 and I'm finally about to experience my first PvE invasion. Right now we're defending Fort Windswood. The guild leading this defence is the Unreal Aussies, the guild that I did my first war with. Also, progression update, I have my weapon mastery for Firestar and Ice Gauntlet, both at level 20 now. Additionally, I've also upgraded my gear quite a bit since my last recording. Aside from the full commander's set, I've now got a full set of over 500 gear score jewellery. 366 int. I also invested in a full set of tier 4 bags, so now I've got 1,154 weight. Here they come. We must defend Windswood. Windswood is our city. Suck them up. Nice. Shit, we got one person that's down. Ugh. Just gonna try and get him with a res. Get them with a the revive. This is getting intense. Oh, there's some kind of giant cannon in the distance. Oh god, there's a big boss coming. Oh no! When the boss spawned, things started to get real. Oh, there's another one coming. We've been breached. We have been breached. Oh god, there's two bosses wailing away on it. Place traps. Oh my god. There's the defeat. Dude, that is difficult. That is really difficult. 630 gold, that's quite good. Um, faction tokens, rep, and a good amount of Azoth. 40 kills, 2 deaths, 600k damage, I was 8th. Let's open this invasion cache, it's got 4 stars on it, level 60. Get anything good? Oh, okay, is that it? Right now I'm over here in Everfall, the town I use to store all of my cooking supplies. And something I've noticed recently is this game's economy seems to kind of be going to shit. Everything's getting cheaper and cheaper every day. Everything's getting undercut. You used to be able to make a lot of money opening boxes and selling these refining components But yesterday Amazon patched the game and these things are super abundant now It just seems really difficult to make money right now Previously when everyone was leveling up doing the side quests each side quest would give about a hundred gold each But as more and more people hit level 60 my concern is there's just less gold coming into this game's economy other than side quests outpost rush invasions and war there's not really a whole lot of ways just to get raw gold in this game. Let's queue for Outpost Rush. Game mode currently disabled. So basically the approach I'm taking right now is sell everything and buy back cheaper as I'm expecting more people to see where this economy is going. Progression update, the house. I've recently invested in five minor trophies for the house. Apparently each one of these can increase your luck with different gathering skills by about 10 to 15%, which really adds up as there's gonna be something I'm gonna be doing for the rest of my time playing this game, really. I've also dabbled in leveling my furnishing a bit. It's currently 52 and we've decorated the house a little bit. It's a bit plain Jane at the moment. It's not currently my end game vision, but we've got some furniture. The dog's happy by the fireplace. Eventually my plan is to get a second house, probably a bigger house that just looks nicer because I don't really like the layout of this one too much. It's a bit 
awkward. Additionally, with a second house, I can get another five trophies, and the effects of those trophies across two houses actually stack. Whereas if I was to have five of the same trophy in one house, it would not stack. Yo, this person looks cool. Plague Doctor. After the invasion, I needed something new to grind whilst watching the Dota 2 International on my other monitor, so I set my sights on furnishing. I chopped thousands of trees for this and made great progress to 200 lumbering. Eventually, I unlocked the ability to make iron storage chests, which could be placed in my Windswood house to increase my storage capacity by 300 each. I knocked out 200 lumbering on a quick iron wood farm run. I made the final push to 200 harvesting by gathering wire weave in North Eden Grove. Then I continued the MSQ by finding a group to take on the Well Guardian boss. This was one of the worst boss encounters in the game, and I feel bad for people who can't find a group for it. The boss room is tiny, the terrain sucks, you're constantly getting blighted, the boss is easily reset, and there's not enough space to dodge his abilities. On top of all that, the quest is recommended level 50 when the boss is a strong level 60 awful encounter that I was happy to get over and done with. So right now I'm in the northernmost zone of the game, Shattered Mountain, continuing with the MSQ, currently at MSQ level 60. Upon hitting level 60, the best item level drop you can get is item level 500. However, to improve the baseline gear score of your drops, you need to get lucky. So if, for example, I'm grinding an elite zone which has better loot, I can get lucky and drop a piece of gear that has higher than 500 gear score, say 505 or 510. Once that item drops, it becomes more common for me to roll higher gear score drops for that slot. It's a really weird loot system, kind of hard to explain, and it basically incentivizes you grinding over a long period of time. I love that body block. That's fun, is that's fun, isn't it? Oh, I love that body. So this is the quest where I get the tier five Azov staff, which is actually currently bugged and cannot be used to seal these portals, unfortunately. Big tier five chests, lots of loot, and that's my tier five staff. Just gives it to me, okay. Cheers. No more MSQ. I guess that's it for the main story for now. Got my tier five Azov staff. I'm assuming the main story will continue as more content is added. This is a really good cooking recipe I got dropped. Probably worth a few thousand gold. We're heading out to declare war on Monarch's Bluff. I ain't doing the mission, I'm just the protector. So for this mining grind, I'm over here in Weaver's Fen and I am stacking a lot of oil. The reason I need a crap ton of oil is because I want to get my furnishing eventually to 200 or at least enough to make a tier 4 slash tier 5 storage chest. The cheapest way of leveling furnishing with current prices is by making stains, mahogany stains and oak stains. Proficiency booster popped, vegetables consumed. Let's get to it. During my mining grind, I ventured to the south of Reekwater, climbing this massive statue, and got to see this epic view. Then I finally capped my final gathering skill, mining, to 200. Ignore fishing. Fishing doesn't count. Commander Kinshiro back again with another Windswood Siege defense. Once again, fighting for the Unreal Aussies, defending Windswood against the Australian Tax Office. This is going to be my first PvP defense, so I'm looking forward to doing some big damage. Jesus, so laggy. I, I can't see anything. She's <laughs> so laggy, man. They're just fucking frozen. What is this? It's like unplayable. Look at this. I know I'm doing damage, but <sighs> hitting and hoping. Big damage, come on. They're all so grouped. Fucking blow up this mage. Got him. Die. I was shaped by the lag, molded by the lag. I'm starting to push them back to their base now. Cannons if you can. Oh, oh. oh shit. Everyone's lagging. What the fuck? Oh, that's it? Failed to <laughs> the whole fucking the server's server. just gone down. Oh my god. Okay. What a game. Did we just crash the server? World under maintenance, you fucking oh, what? The hell just happened? No, <laughs> dude. 
in the middle of a war? After starting to feel tired with how unplayable New World's sieges were, I felt like I needed to try a new play style to keep the game fresh, so I went to Dead Man's Cove and leveled my life staff to 20, as well as getting a few levels in Hatchet and Grey Axe so I could heal. The first group I joined as a healer wanted to do the Spriggan Arena, but it quickly became apparent that the group just didn't have the damage to down the boss before the timer would run out. Easy boss mechanically, simply a DPS check. After that I found a group for the Garden of Genesis expedition. I actually lied to them about my gear score, I said I was 530 and experienced, when in reality I was like 510 gear score and never healed a dungeon before. Regardless, we cleared the place with relative ease and I enjoyed healing it a lot. This was one of the two hardest dungeons in the game at the time, so clearing this with donkey gear gave me a lot of confidence in my healing ability. Later that night I joined an elite farm group to up my gear watermark and was amused to see how easily some of the bosses in this game just freeze and bug out. A few days later, with 526 gear score healing gear, I lied to another group and said I was a 550 gear score healer to get an invite to the hardest dungeon in the game, Lazarus Instrumentality. I had a great time healing this place. There was a good amount of challenge, we one shot the first boss with only two of us alive at the end, and the final boss turned out to be a real healer check. I could see why groups were requesting high geared healers and tanks for this, as for the last 20 to 30 seconds, you need to spam heal your tank with everything you've got. The first attempt I wasn't prepared for this, so we wiped, but the second time around we managed to down the boss. Visually, the final boss of this place was super cool, epic sound effects, cool animations, and the boss was bloody huge. Definitely an enjoyable first experience as a healer. Unfortunately, the quest for beating that dungeon rewarded me with a 580 gear score musket with strength and dex on it. Why the musket had strength when that attribute doesn't scale with the musket whatsoever, I have no idea, but it was insta salvage worthy garbage that felt disappointing to receive for beating the hardest dungeon in the game. And no, quest loot isn't RNG, everybody gets this same musket for doing this dungeon quest, it's ridiculous. A few days later I re-rolled back to Glass Cannon Mage and learned that with a certain build it's fairly easy to solo elite mobs and AoE grind with the fire staff. I joined the Unreal Aussies again and helped retake Winswood in yet another laggy shit fest of a siege where half the players in the game were frozen. I made a crap load of gold from investing in refining components after Amazon buffed the drop rates to a ridiculous degree. I knew this broke the economy and would be reverted so I spent all my gold on this stuff, filled up every storage and sold them for massive gains when the next patch came that inevitably reverted the change. With the profits I bought my way to 200 armoring made big progress with furnishing, and started the journey of crafting a full set of legendary Void Bent armor. Over the next 10 days I continued playing daily, joining elite farm groups to up my watermark, slowly obtaining the resources for my Void Bent set and life skilling. I cleared the Eternal Pool and Sirens Strand elite areas in weak water, and I cleared Malevolence and Mangled Heights a few times. I crafted my Void Bent gauntlets, thanks to stockpiling around 30k potent soul while the prices were 0.01 each, I collected enough oil to almost max my furnishing skill by crafting a crap load of mahogany stain. I joined another war, this time as a heavy healer slash axe puller. I had a great time in this war trying out this new playstyle, although it was another laggy shit show that we eventually won and took Restless Shore for the Marauders. At this point, I learned how fucking stupid monster AI is in New World, and you can manipulate the AI to the point where you can see simply run through all of the elite group areas and take all the treasure chests solo without even fighting a single mob. This became my daily routine to solo ninja all the chests in Siren Strand, Scorched Mines, Mirkgard and Upper Svikin to keep upping that gear watermark. I also ran over to the Eternal Palace, stealing the treasure there and got some pretty cool no UI footage of me killing the final boss with two randoms I met atop the mountain. After a bunch of grinding I managed to obtain my 
my final void bent ingot that I'd need to complete my armor set. I smashed out 200 arcana thanks to my girlfriend spending days gathering stuff for me to power level it. And finally, I set my sights on finishing up 200 furnishing after sniping some rare recipes off the trading post for cheap. It's been about 10 days since I last did a face cam recording for New World and in that time I've made some crazy progress. As you can see I've started to obtain some Void Bent armor, which is the legendary constitution armor. Right now I'm about to craft my third piece, so I'm going to need some Asmodium for that. The resources you need to craft these pieces of legendary armor, you can only make 10 of the kind of components per day. They're on a 24 hour cooldown, so a little bit of a time gate there. And today we're crafting the void bent legs. Beautiful. That's gonna put my gear score up to 542. I'm trying to become a full gold warrior. Next on the agenda, we're gonna be maxing out our furnishing skill. Now I managed to pick up some super cheap high-end furnishing recipes on the marketplace. This ornate gold stove, someone listed for only 100 gold. I don't think they knew what it was. When you get a furnishing schematic, the game does a really poor job of telling you how valuable it is. It doesn't, there's no real indicators. So people just kind of sell it for peanuts, really. Black liqueur tool bookcase. And there it is, 200 furnishing. Quick look at the trade skills, we've maxed out refining, we've maxed out gathering except for fishing, maxed out cooking ages ago, maxed out arcana, maxed out armoring, and now we've just maxed out furnishing. Just give you a quick tour of my house in Windswood. Got the number one residence here by quite a lot, so my house is the one that's displayed publicly. I moved my doggo from the fireplace to the door. I bought some Halloween cosmetics from the cash shop, bought the pirate cosmetics from the cash shop. Got a bunch of high tier recipes placed here, cauldron. I need to replace this stove with the gold one that I've just made. I still haven't found a higher tier storage chest schematic yet, and I haven't seen any listed on any trading posts, so those seem to be very rare. Nice bed in the corner. Lots of treasure, a few more bits and pieces to put on the walls. Place down our gold ornate stove. That's probably going to do it for now. I can't see anybody out doing this for some time. In addition to my house in Windswood, I've also picked up a house in Ebonscale Reach and also in Weaver's Fen. Quick look at the house in Ebonscale. As you can see, I have pimped out a little bit. I do want to get number one on all of my houses so they're all publicly viewable. Little chair here to look off into the distance. This is the cheapest Weaver's Fed house, but you've got quite a lot of space to work with. Gone with a bit more of a spooky theme here to fit the zone. P on the life skiller has become P on the real estate mogul. Following this recording, New World had a lot of game breaking bugs exposed. Most are fixed as of recording this voiceover, but some persist. We've had gold dupes wreck the economy, infinite weight bugs, invulnerability bugs, an infinite healing bug. Half the perks and attributes in the game don't work as players have discovered via testing. Players figured out how to code HTML in the New World chat box, which allowed them to post custom images, crash PCs or dupe gold. Outpost Rush and Endgame Portals were disabled for weeks but are finally now working. Sieges are still completely broken and I've personally stopped taking part in them as the meta literally consists of stack 50 heavy armor, healer CC tanks on the point and auto win due to lag. The game's a complete mess at the moment and it seems like whenever they fix one thing, it causes a chain reaction of other bugs, almost like an MMO exploit whack-a-mole. Final update, since Outpost Post rush was re-enabled and endgame portals are now working, it seems like Amazon are slowly making some progress on fixing the game. Outpost Rush is genuinely fun content, and I love playing my full void bent healer build with a hammer that basically requires 5 plus people to take me down. I also cleared the Siren Arena boss which was a really cool fight in terms of audio, and also really fun to heal. At this point I've seen all the content the game currently has to offer. In the end I server transferred from Yomi to Legado, as the Yomi server was kinda dying, it had really low trading post liquidity and was very difficult to find groups. Final gear score 586, from here I'm just going to be working on completionism and maxing out the rest of my trade skills that I haven't made any further progress with for a few days.
But that's going to be it for my New World Journey to Max Level series plus Endgame video. I hope you guys enjoyed it and regardless of if the game dies or can't fix its bugs, I definitely feel like I got my money's worth and had a great time with the game overall. I really hope you enjoyed the series as a ton of work went into it, probably 40 hours per episode if you combine recording and editing, so a like and comment for the YouTube algorithm would really help. Social media links on screen, thanks for watching, I hope you all had a successful day and I'll see you again for the full review.